Heyo, welcome back to my channel and another Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis video. Please bear with me today as I'm quite damn sick. I hope it won't affect the video too much. Also, want Hunter wanted to say hello. Say hello, buddy. <laughs> All right. So I have been holding out on pulling for the crossover banner for the longest time, expecting another banner to drop, and no banner dropped for quite a while. I've been holding out, holding out, and then eventually last night I decided, you know what, no other banners really coming out, so I am going to pull on the crossover banner, and then BAM, they dropped this banner. And that annoyed me quite a lot, I've been holding out for so long, and the day I decided to cave, they dropped a new banner. This banner has new weapons for Zack and Matt, and a new outfit for Zack, and it looks incredible. This animation is, look at it, probably the coolest animation we have so far in the game. It is really cool, the one for uh, Zack. So Zack gets his new outfit, the Shinra full dress uniform, which has boost HP 10 and buff debuff extension 10 points. I prefer the outfits with boost HP over the outfits with boost physical attack because physical attack is quite easy to accumulate and I just prefer HP. Now the first thing I noticed when looking at this weapon is the name, Ceremonial Sword Z. And if you look at some of Zack's other weapons that have the Z, it is the Enhanced Sword Z and the Crystal Sword Z. And the reason why that Z is there is it is used to differentiate between weapons that both Cloud and Zack have, and the Z differentiates and shows that it's Zack's weapon. There's Cloud's Enhanced Sword, and there is Cloud's Crystal Sword. So that means that Cloud will most likely get a Ceremonial Sword of his own sometime in the future. Now back to Zack's weapon, Ceremonial Sword, it has a very high physical attack stat, it has boost physical attack 40 points and boost physical ability potency 36 points. It has physical attack times 2 and a circle sigil boost for the support materia. And the command ability deals 1400% physical non elemental damage with 10% crit and increases Zach's physical attack by high potency for 35 seconds. So this is officially the hardest hitting weapon that we have in the game. Of course, it costs 5 ATB for that power. Matt's Centipede has a very high heal stat as well. It has a dedicated R ability for heal, the 54 points of boost heal, and it has buff debuff extension. It also has two M attack boosts and a heal boost for support materia, and it's Command ability is an AoE heal at 59% and AoE physical defense increase for your party uh, at mid potency for 14 seconds. So a very impressive healing weapon. I'm going to compare the ceremonial sword against the other two hard hitting weapons in the game, the guard gloves and Zidane's sword. Now, Ceremonial Sword is very similar to Z Zidane's sword, actually. Their physical attack stats are very similar. Ceremonial has five more. They have exactly the same R abilities and pretty much exactly the same support material, except one has a circle sigil boost and the other has a triangle. The command abilities for Cloud, it's 1,300 physical non-elemental with a 10% crit. And for Zack, it's 1,400, same non-elemental, 10% crit and it increases his physical attack by high potency. The difference is that Cloud's costs 4 ATB and Zack's costs 5 ATB for that extra 100% damage and that high potency physical attack increase. So the Ceremonial Sword is looking pretty good. Against the Guard Gloves, it has a much higher physical attack stat and the boost physical attack is emphasized on the Ceremonial Sword Whereas on the guard gloves, the boost physical ability potency is the dedicated R ability there, which I kind of prefer, honestly. As far as the sigils, 
um, I mean, the support material, sorry. Physical attack boost and circle sigil versus physical attack boost and X sigil. Tip Guard Gloves has attack boost for fire, which gives her more versatility in her damage, and I prefer that. For the command abilities, pretty much the same as Zidane's sword. Zack's sword has 100% more damage and higher potency physical attack increase for himself for one more ATB. So it's a bit of a closer call with the Guard Gloves. Guard Gloves has stuff that makes it stand out a bit more. But the Ceremonial Sword is very good. So we need to talk about Limited versus Non-Limited, of course. So the Limited weapons, obviously, you can only pull for them when they are available. And if you don't, then you may not be able to pull for them at all, or at least for a very long time. And because of that, that makes them much harder to max out. Because you aren't able to wishlist them, and you aren't able to get more copies of them in the future. Whereas... With Zack's Ceremonial Sword, I believe it is not limited, so you will be able to wishlist it and get more copies of it in the future. That also makes it easier to uh, max out. So I'm going to compare the Centipede to these four healing weapons. It has a much higher heal stat than the Lifeguard Wraps. And of course, the big boost heal, much bigger than life rod wraps, and the buff debuff extension, which in my opinion is better than the fire resistance. It has a higher potency AoE heal, and it has the physical defense increase for mid potency. So overall, it is better than life rod wraps in every way, except that life rod wraps only costs 4 ATB, and this weapon costs 5 ATB. Versus his own prime number, it once again has a much higher heal stat. It has the big boost heal, much bigger than the prime number. It has the buff debuff extension, which is better in my opinion than the resists. It actually has a smaller AoE heal percentage this time, but it does have the physical defense increase by mid potency for all allies. And the dedicated R boost heal, the 54 points, does make up for that percentage that is lower. So overall, better than the prime number, except the prime number has a bigger heal percentage. Same thing with Crystal Sword, it has a higher heal stat, much higher boost heal, and the buff debuff extension, which is better than the resistance in my opinion. And now the resistance is not bad by any means. If you main hand these weapons, that'll give you 40% resistance to earth in this case, or whatever element it is. That's actually quite good, but it's quite situational as well, being a resistance to one specific element, and it hasn't really been relevant up until now, or it's still not relevant, so yeah, everything else is pretty much the same. Crystal Sword has a higher percentage, but that's made up for with the big boost heal and the physical defense increase. So. Fairy Tail actually has a higher, only 4 points higher, but a higher heal percentage, uh, stats, should I say. But once again, the boost heal and buff, is buff debuff extension is much better than the Fairy Tail's R abilities. Once again, the Fairy Tail has a higher he heal percentage, but because the Centipede has the physical defense increase for all allies by mid, and the big boost heal, I would say that more than makes up for the smaller heal percentage. So, for the Ceremonial Sword, it is overall an impressive weapon. The outfit obviously complements the weapon, giving him more duration on his physical attack up. It has a ridiculous command ability, which does sadly come at the cost of 5 ATB. It is more valuable if you don't have Zidane's Sword or Guard Gloves. And it's easier to max out than the limited weapons that I just mentioned. It has great value in Crisis Dungeon and Ranking Events. And that animation though. So cool. So I would pull for this if you don't have Zidane's Sword or Guard Gloves. If you don't have a solid weapon that buffs physical attack. If you want more power for Crisis Dungeon and Ranking Events. 
because the buff duration up has become a thing in them, and if you like badass animations. For Matt Centipede, I would say it's the best healing weapon right now. It has slightly smaller AoE heals than some of the other weapons, but that is made up for with the dedicated R heal ability, which is the only one besides for Aerith's Guard Stick. And it also has that AoE physical defense of mid potency for all allies, and which is complemented by the R2 ability that makes it last longer. I would pull if you don't have a strong AoE healing weapon, if you don't have an AoE physical defense buffing weapon, or if you don't mind losing out on some healing potency for extra utility, and if you want what I believe to be the best healing weapon arc right now. That is pretty much it. Um, let me know how your pulls go. Thank you so much for watching, and see ya!